Hello guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another prize video of Mr. Iron Bar. So on the last prize video, I managed to get the Hydra's Claw in about like 500 or so KC. So fairly short grind, fairly lucky. Ended up making the Dragon Hunter Lance. So this Lance is the most important item I was looking for from the new update because it should help me with a bunch of different things like certain dragon tasks because I am uh, on occasion, you know, just doing any metallic dragons Mithril enough for chances at rare dragon armor and the biggest use that I would certainly have for it would be to do raids because I'm still looking for the metamorphic dust and of course I have to fight Ohm so I'm pretty sure that this weapon will basically replace the scythe use and my rapier use at the Ohm so the first two weeks of the Kebbles Lowland release there's definitely been a lot of talk about where is the dragon hunter lands uh, best at well, from my first impressions, I can tell you that the Lance, when it comes to mailing most dragons, excels. It's basically best in slot DPS over almost everything. But when it comes to certain bossing situations, there is the talk about the Lance, you know, competing with certain weapons and certain bosses. For example, Vorkath, right? Vorkath, traditionally, Dragon Hunter Crossbow is best in slot there. So a lot of people ask, like, hey, is the Lance comparable to it or is it worse than it? So there's a lot of talk about that. Same thing with Great Ohm as well in raids. Is the Lance going to be excelling over something like a Scythe? So there's a lot of bosses that I haven't tested yet with the Lance. So I'm looking forward to it. So the first thing I want to do is to test the Lance at Vorkast. Because that's a really interesting topic here. So I want to show you guys what I think of the Dragon Hunter Lance there at Vorkath. So I've done a lot of Vorkath kills with range and I've done about 4,000. Most of those kills were done with the current um, meta, which is the Dragon Hunter Crossbow with the Lead Void, Salvian EI, Rigor, and the best range accuracy gear outside of that. And the kill times with that type of gear, also not to mention the acid running and walking, was about a minute 30 to 2 minutes. Sometimes you get over 2 minutes, once in a while you also get kills that are under a minute 30 sometimes even like under a minute but for the most part again average times tends to be around 1 minute 30 to 2 minutes so now I gotta compare that time to the typical times that I would get with the Lance so we have to talk about the type of setup that I'm gonna be using for the Lance so there's a lot of options here but to be honest with you the best option that I've discover when using uh, Lance or mainling at all at Warcath is definitely using full Justicier because I've tried Bandos, I've tried Avoid Melee and Justicier is just the most consistent because of the fact that you will take reduced damage and that means the amount of times that you have to eat during the times when you would be attacking is reduced therefore maintaining your DPS. Bandos is a really close contender to just this CR. There will be some times where you might get slightly faster kills than just this CR. However, there are also these amount of times where because you're not soaking damage, Forkath can sometimes stack you with multiple high hits, therefore forcing you to eat in the middle of the fight and you'll lose significant amounts of DPS. And Elite Void melee is out of the question. You just take too much damage because when you're meleeing, you have to take two attack styles. You can only protect from one of them, right? And in this case, it would be like mage for range. And void melee just has no defense. So that's just out of the question. You take way too much damage, so you're going to spend too much time eating. But overall, just this year is the best because of that damage soaking capability. Do know, however, that with full just this year, you will be going over negative 65 magic. So you do have to bring a magic switch like an ancestral top so that when the spawn shows up, you put it on so that you don't splash on it. So overall, in order of setup recommendation would be number one, Justiciar, followed super closely by Bandos, and then followed pretty closely by anything like Torax, Dorax, Barrels, Tank Armor, and then not recommended Void Melee. The Lance at Vorkath performed really well. It was definitely better than when I used Grassy Rapier at Vorkath. I think Rapier kills were usually around 2 minutes, but with the Lance, my kills were typically under 2 minutes. It was anywhere from 113 to around 220. There was a few kills, maybe like 4 out of like 40 kills that was over 2 minutes. Overall, I would say it's only slightly slower than the Dragon Hunter Crossbow, 
The main reason why the Dragon Hunter crossbow is a bit better at Vorkath than the Lance is mainly because of the Ruby Bolts and the fact that Vorkath has so much HP. You're basically Ruby Bolting over half of its HP, so you're gonna get the occasional like 100 and like 90, 80 damage. So it's definitely hard for the Lance to keep up to the Ruby Bolts. But still, it is very close behind the Dragon Hunter crossbow DPS wise here. I would argue that for some people the Dragon Hunter Lance might be a better choice at Vorkath. Because for example if you're an Iron Man account looking to save a lot of Dragon Bolts for other places like maybe Armadale, Raids, or like the Inferno, then using the Lance here is perfect for you because the Lance doesn't use any ammo. So you'll be getting the most supplies out of Vorkath as possible with the Lance. And you're only doing it a little bit slower than the crossbow. With the Lance you can do multiple kills a trip if you would like. And because it's only slightly slower than the crossbow, it's definitely a good alternative if you are bored of the range method. After killing 600 plus Hydras, I've observed a few things about its drop table. The most notable is how much physical GP that the boss drops. So the spreadsheet that I'm showing you right now is a collection of 10,500 alchemical Hydra kills. I pulled this spreadsheet straight off of Wooks' Alchemical Hydra Master Guide and it's in its description, so you can check it out for yourself. But based on this, you can see that in 10,500 Alchemical Hydro kills, there was a lot of Alchemicals. Look at these, Rune Plate Legs, Rune Plate Skirts, in the 100s, 300s, 600s for the body and dry med homes. So based on this observation, I wanted to find out just how much easy to get GP can I get from Hydra per kill on average. So all the items that you see here are items that you typically out your Hydra trip, so they're converted straight into physical coins alongside the physical coins that you get as a normal drop. The total physical GP from the Algs and the physical GP drops ended up to being about 456,453,800 GP. So that's a lot. That's a lot of physical GP. And further divide that by 10,500, so that will get you your individual physical GP per kill to be 43,471 GP. So this number is actually astounding because the past two days when I was doing Hydra, the average value per kill is about 90k. So what this tells me is that half of the value comes straight from the alkables and the other half comes from, you know, it's non alkable drops. Remember, I'm not talking about the overall profit of Hydra per kill because I'm not including the rare drops like Hydra's Claws which will have a uh, astounding impact on the overall profit in the long run. You're probably wondering what is so important about this observation. Well, I'm pretty sure there is no other monster or boss in the entire game that will give you on average that much physical gold. So yeah, this is basically number one, surpassing even that of Warcat, I'm pretty damn sure. And this is crazy for me, especially as an Ironman, because doing 600 plus Hydras meant that I gained over 20 million physical gold. And yeah, I have that in my bank. <laughs> so I got a grotesque guardian task recently, and I am mostly doing pet hunting through Kona at the moment because of Hydra pet hunts. And because of the ferocious gloves, I thought I would spice up my grotesque guardian setup a little bit. So instead of just the barrels gloves, I'm going to bring the ferocious and barrels gloves for ferocious for when I melee uh, dusk. So yeah, this is my setup now. One extra item, but Inventory space isn't an issue, so it's perfect there. It's going to take a while to get out of the habit, but I keep trying to put on my barrel gloves for even when I'm mailing because I have ferocious gloves now, but my muscle memory is too goddamn strong to click on those barrel gloves, man. Just did 56 kill trip here, disregard the vials on the ground. I like my vials, but I got everything important in my inventory here. Definitely liking the ferocious gloves here. Highly recommend bringing it. Helps sustain max hits. Uh, because of that extra two strength and bit of accuracy over the barrels gloves certainly goes a long way since this task takes forever so yeah you want to just get as much uh, second save per kill as possible so i decided that i will be killing his word boss whenever i get it just because the bottomless bucket is super nice for farming and it's just like a must-have it doesn't seem too hard to get i've seen a lot of people get it so i might as well make that a small goal of mine Snape grass farming is actually pretty wild. Um, definitely not picking up snake grass ever again after seeing how much goddamn snake grass I can get per patch. Look at this. I'm selling my first one. And uh, yeah, we're looking at almost 50 right now. 
And I've heard people getting over a hundred. That must be like a winning a lottery type of deal. But yeah, it's insane. Yes, fifty in one patch. Wow. If that's like the average, man, we're chilling on these. What's next, boys? Oh my God! I already got the Hydra task. That was so fast. After that grotesque guardian task, jeez. Before I head back to Hydra, I'm gonna go and get the diaries done for the teleport here because I'm tired of using the fairy ring. It's a little bit too slow. So it took me like five days to get the Celestial Sea for the Battle Staffs part of the diaries, but I got that some time ago and I already planted it. So yeah, every other task for the diaries can be done all today and I don't have to wait anymore. So yeah, that's nice. There we go, complete all the easy ones. I'm just gonna turn the ball in at, at once though. So next on to medium. I think I have to do uh the two new quests for Sacred Tower, a set of Arceus. No, no problem. This should be all pretty quick. Alright, finish for Saking Tower. God damn. That was a really annoying quest. Oh yeah, finally I can complete the uh memoir too with the two new pieces from the new quests. Now I have access to all the different teleports. Alright, we have the medium diaries completed. On to the hard ones. Yo, look at this guys. The Warm's animations are insane! A little bit scary though, I'm not even gonna lie, the way they're like crawling on the ground, but wow, they they are just fabulous. I don't know what else to say, they just, they look so cool. One of the coolest looking monsters in, in all of RuneScape, for sure. There we go. Finished all the hard diaries. So close. Good thing some of these are already pre-done for me. There we go. I think that's everything, right? Yay. Complete all the elite tasks. Let's go and get this diary reward here. Actually, I haven't gone through all the rewards. I only remember a few really important ones. Dang, girl. Where's that full... What dragon? Literally full dragon plate body. Wow. That's awesome. Even I don't have that on my account. Well done, you'll be wanting your reward then. Konar will now give you 20 Slayer points. That's a really good one as well. That's also really, really good. 10% more Blood Runes. Still nice, even after 99. I might still make some Blood Runes in the future, you know? Oh, no longer need to wear Heat Protection. Yay, I can wear my Pigations then for Hydra. That's also a really, really good one too. Nice, nice. Totally worth it then. Alright, let's test out this uh, Teleport here. The big boy Teleport. Where do I go? Oh, that's awesome, dude. Right next to the, the dungeon entrance. Instead of having to go from the fairy ring back, so much better, dude. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely amazing. Let's go do this Hydra task. Alright, Rada's Blessing. That's my new best in slot, too. Because this thing has uh, two prayer bonus, too, as well. Which is more than the other blessing. So, yeah, it's a new best in slot item for me, as well. All right, it's a little scary, but let's let's have a test here. I, I don't have my boots of stone with me, so let's uh go through. And nope, nothing's happening. All right, I'm not getting roasted. As you can see, I have a shit ton of uh. I have so much GP. This this trip, I've I made 900k GP. That's ridiculous. Okay, just at 800k C. One drop and I'm just overwhelmed by how much shit I get. Uncut Ruby, 31. I remember for at least the first week, Hydra didn't have access to the Konar drop table. I guess it was a glitch because now I'm actually getting them from the Hydra. I mean, where the hell can I get the 31 noted Uncut Rubies from, right? So that's quite interesting. They must have fixed it. It's been a long time since I've showcased the progress sheet of Mr. Iron Bar. So the progress sheet is an Excel sheet, records every single achievement and goals that I've done on this character, and also includes things I haven't done and I will be hopefully eventually completing. So recently I added a few things to the list of things that I want to get done. Wyvern Physis, Dragon Fulham, Dragon Plate Body, Dragon Kite Shield, Bombless Bucket. These things have actually been ongoing. Because when I am pet hunting, if I do get a Fossil Island Wyvern task, for example, or Mythal Dragon task, for example, I do them. So eventually, I might get lucky and get one of these drops, you know, and complete it. So I'll have a place to check it off if I do finish it. And also, in terms of the pet hunting stuff, I actually never had a spot for Meta Dust, which is from Challenge Mode. So I put this achievement spot right below Chambers of Xerix. 
under the pets section. I might as well put it there because it's a really unique drop in a sense. It doesn't really fit in anywhere else. So this is the closest that will fit. Definitely check it out. I update this whenever something major happens. And you can find this in the description of every single Mr. Iron Bar Prize video. You can also get a copy of this yourself if you like, you know, keeping track of your own progress. So yeah, simply click that link that I clicked and then follow the instructions here. And yeah, you'll have your own copy for yourself. So on the next video, I hope to cover the topic of using the lands at raids, especially at Ohm. So that's going to be pretty fun. So we'll continue the progress of Mr. Iron Bar in the next video. Many thanks for watching, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I'll see you guys around with another video very soon. Take care and bye-bye.